Super excited to be in the building today. Um, I need you to do me a quick favor. My young people, pull out your phones. Real quick, pull out your phone. My, my goal is to take you to that next level today. You've heard a lot of stuff. Man, you have been in the presence of some great men. Now, you got to do me a favor, though. It's not about coming to get motivated. It's not about getting motivated, right? Motivation is important, right? And we need that daily because we, we, need, we need that drive. And so, parents, I got to do me a huge favor. Make sure this summer that the babies stay motivated, right? Make sure they stay motivated. And I tell people who disrespect motivation that motivation is like a car battery. It's not the car. But try to move your car without a battery. Yep, try, try to turn that ignition without a battery, right? So you got to make sure that throughout the summer they're listening to the right stuff, they're, the, they're around the right people, and we got to make sure their motivation is high because if their motivation is high, then they can make their dreams become a reality. So I'm going to try to motivate you guys, right? Because here's the reality. The reality is I was talking to my son this morning. Uh, he's 22 years old, right? And I, I just keep it real with my son. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep it real because he got a mom in his life. You know what I'm saying? So I got to balance that off, right? So his mom, you know, mom, like, they got something different. I don't, whatever they have, I don't have it, right? He was in the womb. Like, they was, like, together for months. Like, I don't have that, right? So, so mom let him do the, like, the lay on her and act spoiled. I'm like, I'm not, I'm on warrior. We're on warrior. Like, my job is to make sure that when you get married, you can take care of her and, her, and the family, right? My job is not for you to come home and I got to take care of all y'all, right? My job is to make sure that when you go out into this real world, you can contribute, right? So he had called me the other day and um, he was just like, Dad, you know, uh, he's running this camp and we'll talk about it later. Um, but he was just like, Dad, I'm running this camp. And, and I got to be careful because he came at me with like he had a lot on his plate. And I, st I, was like, I started laughing. I'm like, you don't even know what the plate is. Right. But I'm not going to disrespect you. If you feel like that's a lot, it's a lot. Right. But when we got off the phone, what I had to share with my son was that you have to be very cautious about how you use your emotions. Now, listen to me, men I, and women, listen to me very closely. For, you got to hear what I'm telling you. Emotions is something that the creator gave us. It's a beautiful thing. But when you get to the point where your emotions don't allow you to perform at a high level, we got a problem. Right? So when you get emotional to the point where you cannot produce, then we got a problem. So real quick, I'm just real quick, J.R. Smith. Right? Real quick. Because I want to I, listen to me. I just want I want to keep going and paint the picture for you. Right? So what, this is what happens, young people. This is what happens. And this is why champs is so important. Because what champs is trying to do for you, and this is, let me tell y'all something. This is phenomenal. But I'm going to tell you, as a speaker, I've traveled the world, and the audience that I like to speak to the most is not the NFL or the NBA. Right? It's tough. You're talking to dudes that's making millions and millions of dollars. Like, you got to have a special set of skills to get them to listen to you. I'll be real, I'll never forget, I spoke to uh, Indian, Indianapolis once, and uh, you know, they give you the little reports back or whatever, I'm watching, and my boy Andrew Luck, like, whatever, like, he ain't feeling me, right? And I ain't mad at him, and I can see now, he don't feel me, and I see why he's having problems as a quarterback, right? Um, and I'm just being real, and I see he's having problems because he's talented, right? And he believes that you can get to the next level with talent alone, and you can't, right? So listen to me. So the NBA, the NFL, I hate corporate work, but it pay good, right? I don't never really get up and be like, yo, I'm ready to talk to 500 corporate dudes. Like, I don't get into that. Let me tell you something. The prison is my, I love speaking in the prisons. Let me tell y'all something. When you walk into prison, them babies got 10 to 15, they all ears. <laughs> they all ears. They, they doing three, four years in prison. They like, whatever you say, 
I might speak for an hour and 15. They're like, you ain't got no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, they hate to see me leave. So what I love about champs is that champs program is getting to you while you're young. They get in, listen to me, they get, they're getting to you before you even know you need this stuff. So J.R. Smith, this is what I love about J.R. Smith, right? This is what I love about J.R. Smith, and, and, and I think his name is Rozier, forgive me, but I didn't get to watch like all the games. I don't really study the guys like that. But this dude, I'm talking about rookie killing it. He hitting for 23 one night, for 33 one night, and then game seven. They, listen, listen to me, y'all got to hear me. I'm trying to tell my son, son, the reason why I put you under pressure, my wife, we used to get into it. She like, why are you so hard on him? I'm like, because he going to game seven, sweetheart. Game seven, sweetheart. You ain't getting my man prepared for game seven. Like, for real, you cooking for my man, you spoiling my man. I ain't mad at you. But one day he going to have a game seven. My job is to get him ready for game seven. Listen to me very closely. I just, I just want y'all to hear me. Today, we talking about game seven. So you mean to tell me, Rozier, you put up 23, you put up 30, and then in game seven at the crib, y'all got Cleveland where y'all want them, and you went 0 for 10. Come on, I want to help somebody today. And the reason why you went 0 for 10, because in game three, it wasn't no pressure. You knew it was another game. You knew it was another game, so you ain't got no pressure. You, I mean, you killed it. But game seven, you realize that every shot count. And the shot that was the easiest shot to make to you the other day, at home, in front of your family, you, you listen to me. Y'all got to hear what I'm telling you. When you at home, you ain't in the hotel. When you at home, you eating home-cooked food. When you at home, you practicing on your field. When you at home, it's your sweet spot. That's your, that's your home. That's your place. And you come in and shoot 0 for 10? J.R. Smith, I ain't tripping on Hill. I don't even know who my man is, to be honest with you. I had never even really heard of my man. You know what I'm saying? I know he in the pro, but I hadn't even heard of him. JR, you have been to a finals before. You've been to multiple finals. But what happened? What happened to you in that moment was you were yourself, and it killed you. Now, I don't know how you are in an NBA finals and you're not aware. So listen to me very closely, young people. This is what I'm telling you right now. I'm not, I'm not 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old. I'm not playing with you. There are some people that will tell you that you can be spoiled. They're going to spoil you till you 18, 19, 20. I'm telling you we're living in a time right now in America's history that if you're a brown or a black kid, that you 12 years old, 13, 14, you still, you, they're going to treat you like you grown. You get pulled over by the cops, ain't nobody going to look at you like you're 14 years old. You do the wrong thing, you'll get gunned down in this country. I don't care if you're 15, 16, you make the wrong. So I can't treat you like you 12. That's what I used to have to explain to my wife. Like we get into it and she's like, why are you doing my man like that? Why are you so hard on him? I said, sweetheart, if he was going to live in our house forever, you could pull that off. But he got to go out there. And they not going to treat him out there like you treat him here. So if I knew in my heart that they was going to treat my baby boy like you, I said, do you understand how hard it is for me to discipline him? Do you understand that without my father being in my life, it would be so much easier for me to spoil this boy because my daddy wasn't there? Because I know when you whip a child, they have a tendency like, you know, sometimes they can get upset and I can sever the relationship. I said, do you understand how hard it is disciplining him? But I love him so much that I'm willing to sacrifice our friendship. You better hear what I'm telling you. I'm willing to sacrifice our friendship for the rest of his life. I would, I, I'm, I'm willing to risk our relationship so he can be a grown man. So listen to me, number one. Y'all got to catch this. If you're 12, 13, 14, 15, unfortunately, we seem hard sometimes. But we just understand that you're the last hired and you're the first fired. We understand that when they're looking at these transcripts of who gets into these big universities, that we represent less than 5% of these major universities. We understand, listen to me, we understand when all the other kids are going and studying abroad that our babies don't have the money to go study abroad and they got to, you got to come back home and work while other kids are getting, oh, do you understand that my, my, listen to me, my daughter had almost 40 credits her freshman year in college. It only take 120 to graduate. My son graduated in four years. Let me tell you something, he ain't no genius, but we did something called summer school. I just want the doctors, where my doctors at? I just want to keep it 100, summer school. 
My babies did like 12 credits in summer school. Why? Because the teachers ain't on it like that in the summertime. It ain't rocket science. She taking a break too. He taking a break too. So it's the same course, but it ain't as intense in the summertime. Most African American kids, most Latino kids, can't afford to be there in the summer, and they acting like everybody else is smart. They're not smart. They're doing summer school. They're studying abroad and getting credits for hanging out. So this is what I need you to do. The first thing, the J.R. Smith boy, and I ain't disrespecting J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith is where he want to be. But what, what, what you have to understand is that when you're under immense pressure, you go back to being who you are. Oh, catch what I just said. When you are under immense pressure, what you do is you go back, you revert back to who you really are. And so we got to make sure that we, we allow you to practice now so when your game sevens come, like my brothers who didn't do well in school, they were able to still rebound, and they were able to fight hard, and they were able to do what they needed to do to still get in the medical field. So principle number one, I don't need you to be deep. Number one, I just need you to be aware. I need you to know what the score is. I'm just being real. Number one, you ain't got to be deep. Number one, just be aware. And here's what kills me about some of our babies. When you are born and raised in Chicago for your life, you have to be aware. So why is it that you are aware for your life, but you're not aware for your mind, and you're not aware for your future? And so principle number one, I don't need you just standing there. I don't need you to stand there. This is what I need you to do. Hear me and hear me closely. What I told my son was, son, you have to understand that your greatest commodity, not your shoes, not your car, not your clothes, it's your mind, son. Your mind is the most important thing you have, and you got to control it. You got to control it. I don't care what's happening. You have to control it. So number one, okay, I'm not, you know, in basketball, but somebody should have had a conversation. So number one, make sure if you're not aware, you're hanging out like the doctors, you're hanging out with people who are aware. So let's just break it down because I want to help you out. One of the things that should have happened before they went to the free throw line is they should have had a conversation. All right, here go the reality of it. He'll, you ain't never really been in this situation before. So he's going to be, he's going, he's going, your arms are going to be heaviest they've ever been right now. I'm just real. Anybody ever hoop before, you know four quarters, seconds left, everything counting on you. Watch the first one. Boom. And then we knew he was going to miss the second shot because you could see terror all on my man's face. I'm saying you can look at his face and see he was thinking about the free throws. Let's go back a couple years. Parents, do your homework. We need to be aware. I need y'all to be Reggie, Real Reggie Miller aware. Go back and watch Reggie Miller on the free throw line. He on the free throw line like, hurry up, <laughs> let me get that. <laughs> what is he doing? I've been here 4,520 times. I've been here 4,004. So when we ask you to practice, don't think we try to hurt your feelings. When we ask you to practice, we're not tripping on uh, trying to hurt you. When we tell you to practice, we understand that life going to bust you in your mouth. And the only way to get through life is that you got to go, I've been here before. So when I was doing a dissertation and she told me, you don't have what it takes, I knew I wasn't tripping. She wasn't lying. She wasn't trying to hurt my feelings. She was comparing my writing assignment to all the other kids, and she was saying, you don't have what it takes. But I said, where you come from, skill is the only way you guys become successful. Where I come from, we use will, too. Where you come from, you all A's and B's. Where you come from, you just know it or you don't know it. Where I come from, it's will. Where I come from, you do it three weeks earlier than everybody else. And you keep turning in over and over again. And they show you red, and you turn it back in. And then you turn it back in. Iteration after iteration. Edit after edit. And by turn in day. So go back, homework, go back, watch Reggie Miller. I don't care what game it is, I care. he's looking forward to it. Give me the rock. Boom. Boom. Game over. Number one, awareness. 
I need you to be aware of your surroundings. I need you to be aware of your teacher. Like when I walk into a classroom, I'm peeping my teacher out. When she walk in, I'm looking like, well, she would have been an abolitionist. You know what I'm saying? I'm just looking at her like, well, she would have been down. Like, well, she was, was she down with Harriet? <laughs> no, y'all laughing. I'm being for real. You just think Harriet did it on her own? Like, don't get it twisted. There were individuals who had resources and who had money who supported her. So when I walk into class, I'm looking at my teacher, my white professor, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to throw some words out there. And based on how she responds, if she responds like an abolitionist, I'm like, we good. For real, if she responds like an abolitionist, I can just be real with her where I am academically, and if she's going to give me the support I need to get through. But if I approach her and I say Frederick Douglass, and she's like, who? <laughs> and she's like, nope, I don't give out, nope. Then I realized, because I have a, a sense of awareness, that I can't go to that professor and ask for help. I got to go find a Demetrius Marlowe, and I got to sit at his feet and get what I need to need, because the teacher is looking like you shouldn't have been here in the first place. How did you even get accepted? So I'm like, nope, she's not going to help. <laughs> so now I got to take her syllabus, and we got to go step two. I wanted to take it to her and show her what I didn't understand so she could help me, but she already proved that, uh-uh, that's not going to work. So I go to Marlowe, and he said, let me get the syllabus, and we go through the syllabus, and he said, meet me at lunch every day. And it's what a sense of awareness. 50% of your problems are over once you know what the problem is. Yeah. Once you, listen to me. So had J.L. Reed been aware of what was going on, he would have got the rebound and immediately went. He would have simplified the problem. He would have just grabbed the rebound, bop, time out. Why? Because you got M. Listen to me. You got, you got, I'm going to say MJ, but we go, I say LeBron. I go with LeBron, right? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? So you got 4.5 seconds to throw the ball in, get the ball to LeBron and let LeBron do a couple moves and potentially, boom, hit the game winner. Instead, you take the ball and run. <laughs> now, first of all, I'm like, I don't know what, I don't know. That's like no discipline whatsoever. That's just like, for real, you just hood, you a hood basketball player. For real, that's just like you a hood basketball player. That's like 21 and it hit rim. You just like, it hit rim. I got to go back to the top of the key. It hit rim. <laughs> That's like support. I'm just being real. You playing, but what happens when you're under stress, you just go back to who you are, undisciplined. If Scotty would have got that same rebound, Scotty, Scotty probably, he could have called a timeout, but where Jordan was, he wouldn't even need one. Jordan was at the top of the key like that by himself. Scotty wouldn't even call the timeout. Scotty would have. Scotty would have went for the rebound. Like where MJ? Okay, he right. All right. Boom, boom. And MJ would have been like, okay, it's four point one, two seconds, two. Okay, eight seconds. Boom. I'm just talking about a sense of awareness. Some of y'all like because you don't know. You like MJ would have got. He wouldn't have. With four point five seconds, MJ would have been like, we got to waste. We got to waste some of this time right here because if I make it and they get it back, they're going to have a chance to score. So we're going to waste a little time. They're going to do one or two. They're going to foul me and I'm going to murder them. He put me on the free throw and I'm going to murder them. Or they're going to leave me open and we're going to waste. And three, two, one. Boom. So number one is a sense of, come on, a sense of, Come on, sense of, that's number one. I need y'all to be aware. The way you act the first week of school is not how you act in the middle of school. The way you act in the middle of school is not the way you act the last three weeks of school. Listen to me, number one, I just need a sense of awareness. I'm not the smartest dude, but I get to a place and I, got it. And then we make our move. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So give me a favor, when you get a chance, get your phone, once you go equalizer, first scene where Denzel comes in and goes, boom, 16 seconds, I'm about to kill everybody up off in this joint. <laughs> and go. <laughs> Denzel like, and go, but what did he do first? Okay, he over there, okay, he right there, he got a gun, he got a, all right, all right, let's go, got it. Boom, it's a five, boom, 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 boom. It's it took 19 seconds. I was three seconds off. Number one. Number one. Number one. From this day forward, I need, your, I need both your eyes wide open. 
and I need you to take notes of what you see, and then I need you to make your moves. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Homeless. Two and a half years, homeless. I survived the streets, homeless. There was a couple things I was aware of. I was aware on both sides of my family that the men in our family used drugs. I was aware, a sense of awareness. And I started seeing stuff that was happening in their lives that wasn't necessarily productive. And I started noticing, I just started taking notes. Okay, they, okay, they, okay, they had used drugs or alcohol. Okay, some finished some, most of them didn't finish school. Okay, they all had multiple women, kids by multiple women and didn't take care of some of the babies. Got it. It's not rocket science. You don't need no PhD for that. So I was like, okay, boom, boom. 47 years old, I've never drank ever. I've never smoked. I'm not telling you not to drink or smoke. I'm telling you I was aware the men in my family are not necessarily successful, and let's find out why. Just a sense of awareness. Okay, they don't take care. All right, good. They got multiple women. Got it. Kids by multiple women. That look like that must be complicated. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm keeping it 100. That look like that must be complicated. That, like, that, that ain't something easy to pull off. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> okay. All right, some of them didn't finish high school. Most of them didn't, not, uh, look like only a couple, maybe one might have went to college. Got it. So I never drank, I never smoked. I started dating my high school sweetheart when I was 16 years old, married her after our freshman year in college. We've been married 28 years. I had two kids by the same woman. I got a PhD. It's not rocket science. Everything they did that wasn't right, I did the opposite of it. I just had, I'm not stupid. I had a sense of awareness. I'm like, oh, they don't do school. Look like we need to probably do school. <laughs> I dropped out. And when I dropped out, guess what happened? I'm trying to tell y'all, when I dropped out of school, I started seeing stuff happen in my life. And I'm like, you said you weren't going to be nothing like your daddy. You on the same path. You said with your mouth, you weren't going to be like him. But it looked like you about to be just like him. You got you to gotta switch. What do I do, God? Do the opposite of what you're doing. Go to school. Make a commitment. And let me tell y'all something. I'm being 100. I made a commitment to that girl at 19 years old. And what I didn't understand is you make one commitment in your life, you start, it's that much easier to make commitments. In. When you make a commitment to somebody, and you're able to stick with that commitment only by the grace of God, but by the grace of God, not commit adultery. When you start making a commitment in one area, it becomes that much easier to make a commitment in school. And it becomes that much commitment. Okay, first it was my girl, then my kids. And then it was easy to make a commitment to school. It was easy to make a commitment to writing a book. It was easy to commit to make it becoming a motivational speaker. And it was easy to commit to doing a dissertation. What I'm trying to tell y'all about J.R. Smith, nothing against my man, but what I'm trying to tell y'all is what he did at a very important moment was what he always does. He just wasn't exposed. It's not choking. It's called habits. It ain't choking. He didn't choke. You know, you didn't see one man when he grabbed the ball and was looking at somebody and they was like, what? And he was like, you didn't see that. What you saw was years of habit. Go, go watch my man on Facebook Live and see what he does. Go follow his Twitter, Twitter and see what he be doing on Twitter. Go follow him on Instagram and see what he's doing on Instagram. And then go follow LeBron's habits. LeBron spent $1.5 million this year on his body. Sleeps in a chamber. Gets this oxygen stuff. You don't see Bron drinking and smoking. You don't see Bron at clubs acting crazy. So what you have is these dudes that's clubbing and doing their thing, and they think they're just going to turn that off, and they're just going to turn on being the greatest player that ever played. J.R. Smith didn't do nothing wrong. He just did what he always does. He just got caught this time. And he grabbed the ball. I, was just like, I don't know, it was football or basketball. And he was like, bah. And LeBron was like, what in the world? <laughs> LeBron was like, bro, where are you going? And listen to me very closely. If you was going to steal a game, that was the game to steal. He might have potentially ruined the whole series. So what I'm trying to tell you when you hear me in the spirit of the living God, 
You play around right now, one day you're going to wake up in your dream. You're going to be in the NBA Finals game one, and you're going to do something stupid because you've been doing something stupid the last 15, 20 years of your life. So I'm telling you right now to work on your habits. Number two, I was talking to my son. Number two, come on, parents, I need you to hear number two. Number two, look, first one is a sense of? A sense of? A sense of? Y'all from Chicago, you know you go to, let me just say this real quick. You in Chicago, summertime, you out in July, you and your homies, 4th of July, y'all out playing, all of a sudden, you just see a suburban come by, doing 60 miles, miles per hour, hit that donut, slow down to 20, the windows come down. You see homie put, stick his face out the window. You, you do what? You do what? Run. Listen to me very close. We ain't take no classes for that. We ain't no three credit course for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't never took a class. Your mom ain't never sat you down. Son, I just need to talk to you. If you ever see a suburban come in the neighborhood, and it's, it's a black suburban son specifically with tinted windows, if the windows go down, what I need you to do? Nobody ever had that conversation with you? But you know to do what? You know, you know to do what? That's a sense of a, that's a sense of a, don't just do it in the hood, do it in school. Do it in life. So watch this. If you were to go to another neighborhood, let's just say you go to a Jewish neighborhood and that same thing happened, you may not have to run. For real, I asked, I asked some Jewish kids, what you do? They was like, well, it depends. I was like, it depends on what? It's like he might want directions. He's not from the neighborhood. He wants to find out where he's going. I'm like, wow, love it. <laughs> Brilliant. But that's, that's a sense of awareness in their neighborhood. Listen to me, number two, I got one more after this, but you gotta get this one. Number two, listen to me very closely. Number two, if you're 12 and older, let me see your hand. You're 12 and older, let me see your hand. Good, listen to me, 12 or older, let me see your hand. You're 12 years old, 13, 14, good, hands down. Do me a favor, it's gonna hurt. 12 year olds, 13 year olds, it's gonna hurt. Mamas don't go against me just for the presentation. You can go against me later. If you're 12, 13, 14 years old, I need you to take complete ownership of your life. Listen to me, from this day forward, listen to me very closely. If you go to Iraq or Red, they, they ain't got PlayStation. They ain't got PlayStation over there. Somebody was telling me about the camp, and I was like, yeah, we're going to charge about a little over 100. And some mom was like, over 100? I said, Ma, you paid 200 for a gym shoes. You paid 200 for his gym shoes. You can't pay 200 for his development? You can spend 200 on entertainment? You can give my man a PlayStation that's going to take him down the path of destruction, but you can't teach him to invest in himself? Mama, make him take his money, his money. His gym shoe money and make him spend it on himself. Teach your baby ownership because you might die one day. You might get sick one day. Then what he going to do? And so I was talking to my son about, he was talking about how, Dad, I got so much on my plate. I got this, I got that. I said, shut up and man up. You ain't in Iran. You ain't in Iraq. You ain't carrying no gun. You ain't at war at 13. What's on your plate? Which Jordans to wear? What's on your plate? What clothes to wear? What's on your plate? Returning the email? What's on your plate? Going to look at the facility? What's on your plate? So the day my life changed, because I wasn't always the number one motivational speaker in the world. I was homeless, living in an abandoned building, eating out of trash cans. When did my life turn around? The day I stopped saying, my daddy wasn't in my life. I remember praying one day. I'm out praying 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm talking to the creator at 3 o'clock in the morning. And I ain't where I want to be. And I'm like, God, I ain't where I want to be. And he was like, you stop being a victim. I said, what you mean a victim? Well, it ain't my fault my mom got pregnant at 17. It ain't my fault my daddy wasn't there. It ain't my fault they couldn't get along. It ain't my fault. He said, boy, you, you grown. You ain't 10 no more. You, you, the decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you're doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games. 
and what you crying about? So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? You was never sexually assaulted. What you crying about? To somebody beat your butt because you did something you wasn't supposed to do? What you crying about? Nobody just came home and started whipping you? Man up. Principle number two. Man up. Stop crying. My teacher don't like you. Why? Why she don't like you? Maybe you talk too much. Maybe you disrespectful. Why don't, don't say she don't like you. Go look in the mirror and take full ownership. Why does she not like me? I'll never forget. I said, God, I want to be one of the best at what I do. I want to change lives. And I got a call from Les Brown. And I flew to go meet Les Brown. He said, E.T., you should be making at least $50,000 nationally and $100,000 internationally. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, kid, you good. So I went home. I was like, God, why ain't you making 50000 He said, because you're you watching the World Series. Because you're watching the NBA Finals. Because you're watching football and you're watching three games. You're watching the 1 o'clock game, the 430 game. The 8 p.m. game, and then you watch ESPN to rewatch everything you watch. <laughs> That's why you ain't successful. You're watching LeBron make his dreams become a reality. You're watching the Black Mamba make his dreams become right. If you put the same time LeBron put in, and I started studying, and I realized as an African-American male, I need to get a master's degree and a PhD in order to do what I'm doing. And guess what? I had to get up even though it was hard, and I had to take ownership of my life, take ownership of my time, take ownership of my day. You got a phone, and you're not learning the second language. That's your fault. You got a phone and you don't know how to do calculus, that's your fault. You got a cell phone, a smartphone, you can go on the internet, and all you're doing is being social on it, while Zuckerberg is making billions of dollars on it? Showtime. Listen to me, one more thing, but I'll leave you with this. It's time to take ownership. You want your clothes washed? Mama, make the boy wash his clothes. Teach him how to separate the colors from the white. Mama, let your boy cook. Teach him how to cook. Let him take ownership. Make him go grocery shopping. He said, well, he don't know how to cook like me. Give him at least a day then. Give him two days. Take ownership. Teach him how to change the oil. Make him put gas in the car. Ownership. I love my daughter the light, but when we go, when we go to the gas station, my baby girl get out. My baby girl get out and pump the gas. Somebody said, why you make your, why you make your queen to be? Why you make her, why you make her pump gas? Because I need a teacher, one day I might die on this plane, and she need to know how to put the gas in the car. Listen to me very closely. Make these boys grow up. Fellas, take ownership. Don't you ever say you don't have something because of what somebody's doing. Right here, Fair Greg grew up right here, started selling rocks, became a millionaire. Right here in Chicago. So I need you to take ownership of your time, of your what? Of your mind, of your what? Oh, come on, y'all playing. I used to get so mad at Jalen. Jalen would get up. I knew it was football day because he'd get up 6 o'clock in the morning. His uniform was ready. His shoes was ready. And he would eat breakfast. I'm like, what's going on? He like, game day. Friday night lights. Game day. And I would be so upset. And he's like, why you hating on me? <laughs> you hating on me, Dad? Like, you can't stand. I'm going to be a football player. I'm going to the league. You hating on me. I said, I'm not hating on you. But what I hate is that the energy for school and the energy for life, you don't have the same energy for that that you got for football and girls. All I'm asking for is the same energy you put in sports. I'm asking for the same thing in terms of your mind. So before I go to my last one, first day of school, Jalen is at a predominantly white school. No white, no black professors. No, it's a high school. No teachers. No administration. No faculty or staff. I send my son to the school. My son get to the school. I pay a tip. They got like, well, you can go online and look at their grades. First test he got in math was a 38. Second one was a 58. Now my son didn't know it, but he forget. So he left the password in that joint. I wrote it down. So I was just going on a sneak tip without even knowing, looking at his stuff. 
And so one day he in there getting ready, he in there getting a the hat to match the J's. He got to fit and he in there singing to himself, rapping, doing his thing. I walked in, I said, son, I got a question to ask. He said, what's up, dad? I said, do you have a learning disability? And he was like, <laughs> a what? I said, a learning disability. He said, a learning, a learning, a learning disability. Come on, dad. Where you get that from? I said, boom, 38 and the 58. That's where I got that from. He was like, oh, no, dad, no, no, no. See, what happens is, you know, they give out about uh, 10, 15 tests throughout the course of the year, and the first two, I'm just kind of filling it out. I'm filling the teacher out. I was like, well, you ain't doing a good job of filling her out, though, so you got 38 and 58. He's like, but, dad, don't you see the progression, dad? 38, 58, next one about to be a 78. I got this. Now, I probably shouldn't be saying this because we're recording, but I told my son, you're one of the very few black males at that school. You got 30 days. I will murder you. You got 30 days, son. You represent me. I'm around here telling people all over the world as a motivational speaker that they got to want to succeed as bad as they want to breathe. And my own seed ain't taking it serious. I will murder you in 30 days if your grades ain't up. And I will come up to the school and do it in front of all your friends to show you how serious I am. I'm willing to catch a case. I'm willing to catch a case, son. He know I wasn't playing. My man came back 30 days later with all A's. I was heated. I was upset. And he was like, Dad, I seem like I do bad. You pissed. I do good. I can't win. I said, I'm pissed because you should have been doing this in the first place. But now somebody got to tell you they're going to whip you or they're going to disrespect you in order for you to do it. Take ownership. If you can get all A's in the class, do it. You don't, you, 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 you don't need nobody to give you $50, $100, no pair of shoes, take you on no trip. You a grown man. Do it because you can. Do it because our ancestors couldn't. My man at the University of Michigan, do you understand 100 years ago, those Africans that were enslaved could have went to U of M and murdered, could have went to Princeton and Harvard and Yale, but it was illegal for a black man or a black woman to read. They would lynch you if you got caught learning. And here you are with the opportunity and you ain't going to do it. So my last one is I need you to get 120. I tell this story all the time, my favorite story. My baby girl was probably in the third or fourth grade. It's just crazy even thinking about it now. And I picked her up from school when she was crying. And I was just like, yo, man, which little boy hit my girl? Like, yo, I don't do, I don't, I don't do that. I got 11. My grandma had on one side 11 females. My other grandma had two and two. I just been around women my whole life. Most of my uncles, they weren't really in my life like that. Just been around females my whole life. So much respect for the women who like been there, done that. So I'm like, you ain't about to put your hands on my daughter because I don't put my hands on her. So I'm telling my daughter, tell me who did it. She like, oh, I'm like, point, sweetheart. She's like, oh, daddy, no. I said, okay, if you can't point to him, just come whisper his name to me. Little man about to take an L today. I swear to you, when I finish with little man, I don't know if his daddy in his life, I don't know if his daddy in his life, but I promise you after the day, little man gonna learn, don't you ever put your hand on my child again, because I don't bring my child to school to be no punching bag. Show me where little man at. And she just like, uh, I'm thinking it's the no tail code, like the snitches, I'm like, don't worry, the snitch gonna die today. You ain't gotta worry about, you ain't gotta worry about the snitch tomorrow. He gonna be gone right now. We gonna handle this. The principal like, Mr. Thomas, what's going on? Like, you are usually PTA, you a good parent, like, why are you? And I'm like, cuz, this is my baby girl. She finally calms down, like, dad, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's all good, I know he hit you first. She's like, no, daddy, no. I'm like, okay, well, he must have aggravated you then. <laughs> She's like, no, daddy, I gotta, I, I gotta be in math. I'm like, I'm about to go to jail because you gotta be in math. I'm clowning. I'm in here clowning. And you ain't said nothing. I'm talking about she devastated. Take her to the crib. I can't calm her down. Her brother's three grades higher. My man walked in the door. He playing football. My man knocked it by, kicked the door in like, yo, dad, I got my report card. Boom, behold. I'm like, bad. My man stepping up his game. You know, I know the deal. He need a carrot. 
he just ain't gonna do what he's supposed to do. But because he playing football, he gotta handle his business. So I got it. He gonna. Have, I, I got it. Let me see. He like, hold up, Dad. Before you see that, Dad. Like, yo, I wanna go out to eat, Dad. I deserve a reward. I'm like, all right, whatever, bro. If I gotta feed you to make you do well, whatever. I, I'm just not tripping. Whatever. I get my man report card. My man got all C's. He like, boom. My man, like, I passed all my classes, what? I'm still on the football team. I'm like, what? I'm like, God, did we not have the same mom, same church? They got the same area. What in the world has happened? I tried, I've been praying, and I've been doing everything you told me to do. Is this the outcome? My man, geek, like, sees, blah, blah. <laughs> next grade. <laughs> my man, like, I'm going to the next grade. Let's go. I said, bro, you got a C minus in English. You don't speak another language, bro. This all you got. What's up? I'm not understanding. This is crazy. He like, but I got a C plus in phys ed, Jim. That's C plus C, that's the that, that's 2.0 all the way across there. What you tripping about? I'm like, yo, this is unbelievable. My daughter, she crying with a B. Let me tell y'all something. Remember I told you your habits? I didn't know this until she was a junior or senior in high school. I took her to like the best of the best to get tested so that she could do better on her SAT. And she kept coming back with like an 18. And she couldn't go any higher. And I was like, what's going on? And the dude was like, Mr. Thomas, we need to have a discussion with you. I'm like, bet, let's talk, bro. He was like, man, we, hate, we, we regret to inform you. Now I'm embarrassed because I'm an educator. I should have known in the fourth grade when she was crying. Say your daughter has a deficiency in math and science. And I'm thinking to myself, yo, why did I catch that? But the, sh here go my last point, y'all gotta catch it. The reason why I never caught it, cause she got that dog. She got that dog. And she was able to do good academically even though she had a deficiency. And I never knew she had a deficiency because she would say, dad, I need you to drop me off at school early. I'm like, why? I need to meet with my teacher. She never told me she wasn't doing good. I'm like, sweetheart, what time you get out of school? She's like, pick me up late. I got a meeting with my teacher. And I would find out later that all those meetings, it's because she had a deficiency. So she would meet early because she would get like a D or a C on the test. And she'd tell the teacher, me and you got to meet. You got to show me what I can do right. I got to fix it. I got to get it right. And when she got to Michigan State, they told me, that's your baby girl, so she in. But you need to understand, she need to get a tutor. We will bring her in on academic proficiency. And I showed my daughter the letter, and she laughed. <laughs> she said, Dad, I've always been on academic proficiency since I was in elementary school, but I got that dog. Her freshman year, she got 40 credits, and I told you it only take 120 to graduate. And the reason why she on a three-year track is because her brother graduated in four years. We had the whole church in the building. We had our family in the building. And when they called his name, everybody stood up clapping, and I watched my little girl go. <laughs> <laughs> if, he could, if he could do it in four? My daughter said, if that boy can graduate in four years, I could do it in three. Listen to me very closely as I leave. What's your name? Damar? Damar. Who you think the smartest, my son or my daughter? That's what everybody say. But my son ain't got no deficiencies, at least not any learning ones. <laughs> no, you better hear what I just told you. I told you a sense of awareness. I told you to take ownership, and when you leave, I need you to give 120%. And that's the difference between my baby girl and my son. The only reason he did it is because he was a manager for Michigan State basketball. And guess what? He got on academic probation his freshman year, and Izzo pulled him to the side and said, you can't be here on academic probation. So his whole life, he needed a carrot. My daughter ain't never need no care. She her carrot. And I'm telling you, when you walk out this room, stop needing a carrot. Stop needing money. Stop needing a trip. Stop needing somebody to give you a sticker on your head. Stop needing to hear you an honor student. And do it for the pride of who you are. Do it because you can. Get all A's because you can. I don't care what your friends are doing. 
And my son wasted, has wasted his academic, his academic uh, excellence. And my daughter did what she had to do to get to the next level. So I leave you with this. There's no black or brown. There's no, you, there's no difference. You are excellent. Now stop playing small. You are excellent. Stop playing small. You are excellent. Stop, stop taking the hand that they dealt you. I got a PhD, no disrespect. But that wasn't given to me. I had to fight for that. It's not like my family members, like everybody got a PhD. Everybody wrote a book. I had to fight for that. Do not be married 28 years to the same woman, two kids by say. I had to fight for that. I had a few examples, but not a whole bunch of them. I had to fight for that. When you leave, what you fighting for? What's your legacy? What you going to do? You say you a champ, but do you practice like a champ? You say you a champ, do you fight like a champ? You say you a champ, do you have a mentality of a champ? And me and my youngsters get into it. But I tell them, you can talk about LeBron as much as you want to. MJ had the mentality of a champ. MJ had the mind of a champ. MJ was a winner. MJ was a killer. And you need that same mentality. Muhammad Ali was a killer. Mike Tyson was a killer. I need you to have that same mentality. Stop going to a math class and backing down. Hey, it's math. It's a, it's a standardized test. Uh, it's a spelling. Uh, it's writing. I want you to go up to that writing and say what? You ain't got nothing on me. I want you to go to those standardized tests. And I want, you ain't got nothing on me. And I want you to lick them. And I want you to go to the next level and not just be a champ, but show the world what a champion looks like. So if you're with me, say, I am. I am. Come on, I am. I am. Therefore it is. Therefore it is. I am. I am. Therefore it is. Therefore it is. I am the head. I am the head. Come on, I am the head. I am the head. And not the tail. Come on, I am the head, and not the tail. I am a lender, and not a borrower. Come on, I'm a lender, and not a borrower. I am royal. I am royal. I am royal. I am. Therefore it is. I am. Therefore it is. Finally, I will. Come on, I will. I must. Come on, I can. I will. I will. I must. Come on, I must. I must. I must. Now I ask you to take your phones out. I need you to write down the names of the people you love. Who are you going to do this for when you walk out this room right now as I leave? Come on, put those names in the phone. I can do this for Vanessa. I can do this for Dee Dee. I will do this for Jalen. I must do this for Jada. I can. I will. I must. I want you to write it down. Come on, who are you doing it for? And when I say I can, I need you to scream their name out. I can. Nope, when I say I can, scream that person you love name out. I can. I can. I will. I will. I must. Again, come on, y'all sound so soft. Who are you doing it for? I can. I can. I can. I will. I will. I must. I must. Say the name. I must. Now, one more time. I can do this for. Come on. I can do this for. I will do this for. I must do this for. So, I'm in Chicago today for free because this is where I was born. And as I look at how many young people die on a regular basis, how many young people that do not make their dreams become a reality? I have to come home and be a part of the solution and not just talk about the problem. So I love you. The question is, do you love yourself? And when you leave today, I need you to do you and those people you love a favor. I need you to make the rest of your life the best of your life. It's your boy, E.T. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yo, yo, hold on, hold on, E.T. Stay right here, brother, man. Oh, my goodness. So, so powerful, man. Y'all keep up for this brother again. Come to Chicago because he loves that one. Now, brother, we want to let you know how appreciative we are of you. Coming to Chicago, doing what you're doing. I could have did it, but we're going to give it to the people who you affected. So I'm going to pass this microphone to our young men, and they're going to talk to you for a second. Come on, sir.
which he took, uh, took out uh, for the last few days. So therefore, therefore, Brad would like to present the keynote speaker award. Wow. Wow. Praise God, y'all. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. That's your special song. Yeah, thanks, man. Put your hands together again. Come on now, y'all. And we always say we don't miss the greatness right now. This is what love looks like to fuck with, y'all. Come on now. Yes, sir.